you as you walk towards them, you know, as a prospective relief claim. When you walk through that door, you'd become institutionalised, wouldn't you? You would. I mean, it's a, a uniformed environment. I've got a, a button here from a, a workhouse uniform. Oh, my goodness. And it's part of the way that you would be dehumanised. When you, when you enter the workhouse. So anything you might still own is stripped away from you. You're yes. put in some really ugly uniform yes. that marks yeah. you out so everybody marks knows. Marks you out. You are a pauper. You are an inmate. You belong to this institution. So what actually happened to families when they got here at the workhouse? Well, once they arrive at the workhouse, what's going to happen is the families are going to be divided up. So we're in the workhouse here at Southern. This is the male ward. So the males would be here, the wives would be taken elsewhere, and the children would be divided as well. And they'd be in another part of the workhouse, so you wouldn't see each other. Workhouse conditions were meant to be bad, so that they would act as a deterrent to people applying for relief. But those who did end up here had to work. This is the day room where the work happened. This was one of the most important for women inmates, oakum picking. Well, oakum is sort of, it's the old bits of rope that are no use for anything else. They've been cut into short lengths or it's gone into knots. It's usually from the sailing industry. If you can pick it all apart, back into a fibre, you've got something that is brilliant for corking ships, for sticking in all the gaps to keep the water out. But the process itself, it's slow, hard, smelly. For five minutes, it's not that bad. But if you're doing it day in and day out, it has a real impact on your hands. How are you going to get out of this? Linda Hansen is one of the 200 volunteers working on the Living the Poor Life project. Has it been throwing up interesting stories? One story from Mansfield, there was a man whose son died and he couldn't afford to bury the child and they write to the authorities and at one point the authorities say you've got to throw him in the sinkhole because you can't afford to bury him. There were stories of people being so poor as well, they didn't like the workhouse, that they refused to go into the workhouse. And we've got cases in Southampton and other places of people who didn't go in the workhouse and then died of starvation. Of the hundreds of thousands of paupers who ended up in the workhouse, many were unmarried mothers. They were considered morally reprehensible and had nowhere else to go. This mock was made in the workhouse for pregnant women, for those who came in either pregnant in a family or more commonly the unmarried women, those who had no one else to turn to and were desperate. A woman on her own really didn't stand any hope of making enough money to bring up children. You do wonder, don't you, how some poor abandoned young woman bearing her first child, dealing with all that shame, would have felt wearing it. The stories behind these documents give an invaluable insight into the lives of the poor in this period. But these are not strangers. They are our own ancestors. There's lots of little booklets on your mind. My ancestor was a seaman. My ancestor was a, a railwayman. In the main, our ancestors were poor. Yeah. And therefore, we look to these kind of institutions and the records around these to find out much more about the world they lived in. It's a really poignant reminder, this tiny little button, of the hard choices so many of our ancestors had to make. I mean, do you starve on the outside or do you put up with the shame and discomfort of the workhouse? Hard choices that we don't have to make. The lovely Ruth is here. Mustard's obviously in, Ruth. It is. Yes. You had a Thank chat, you. by the way. We had a little chat. Yeah, Andrew and I had a chat, chat didn't we, beforehand? <laughs> we did, yeah. We'd like to keep abreast. Yes. Yeah. Easy. You're very smart. With you. <laughs> anyway, once you're in the workhouses, Ruth, how difficult was it then to get out? Well, the official line was they were trying to chuck you out as fast as they possibly could because obviously, you know, they don't want to pay to keep you. But it, I mean, for adults, it was often quite hard. I mean, everything you owned could be sold. How do you start again? I mean, it's like being a homeless person today, yeah. isn't it? If you haven't got an address and you haven't got any more contacts, how do you get a job? Um, and an awful lot of adults got trapped like that. But for youngsters, it was a bit of a different story. They were really, really keen to get children jobs out there as fast as possible. I mean, they're usually pretty shitty jobs. I mean, think Oliver Twist. You know, famously, there he is in the workhouse. He's a bit of a nuisance. So they find him some job sweeping up in an undertaker's. And you find girls are being pushed into nasty sort of serving jobs and lads are being shipped into the bottom end of the forces. Um, I mean, even... 
In Ireland, for example, 4,000, more than 4,000 young girls were forcibly sent to Australia to do, well, ostensibly to work as servant right. girls, though many of them ended up on the street. I mean, just no choice, really, just get out. And a very famous little boy was once in the workplace, <laughs> wasn't he? He was. I've got his admissions record here. I mean, this is the day he was signed in. And if you have a little look down, there's the surname, Chaplin. And there's his name, Charles, young Charlie Chaplin. Oh, yeah, that's his brother, is it? Sydney? Yeah, that's his brother, yeah. Sidney, there. They'd already been separated from their mother at this oh. point. And um, how old were they then? He was seven. Wow. Seven years old, poor little thing. And he moved from institution to institution. But, I mean, it does show that not everybody who had such a difficult start in life mm. was condemned forever. I mean, Absolutely. Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at some point, you know, he was perhaps one of the most famous men in the world. Didn't hold him back, did it? It didn't. I mean, they often say, you know, he himself used to say that that famous character, you know, the tramp, yeah. was actually based on his work house. Well, the kid was all about the work house, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Maybe the kid was all about the work house. Yeah. Thanks, Ruth. Lovely. No, thanks, Ruth. Sorry about the language as well, there. <laughs>